So today I'm going to talk about following up with prospective clients and how it can be bad. Um, I've already mentioned before that you should follow up with prospective, prospective clients uh, or with your current clients as well, and that you should be quick about it. You shouldn't delay, and it's one of the main things I see, especially when people are starting out. They get nervous. They, they, they're they nervous about sending the email out and uh, or the response out or anything like that, and they're like, well, I'll look over it again later to make sure it's perfect and stuff like that, and many times people lose business because in the meantime, someone else is swooping in and taking their business. So you should follow up, and you should follow up in a timely manner, i.e. quickly. However, I'm going to talk about when you should not be following up and when it can be bad to follow up with a company. Anyway, yeah, let me get into it. So the, the issue is when, say, a company contacts you, says, oh, we're interested in this and that, and uh, can you give me your qualifications, or they ask you some information about you, you follow up and, and you send it to them, and then you don't hear from them. You get radio silence. So maybe you follow up a day or two later, hey, just want to see what was new. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're looking over it, something like that and then you don't hear from them again. Then you say, hey, so is anything happening? I'm trying to, you know, schedule my my thing here. And then, uh, you know, and maybe there they'll be like, oh, we're just waiting or something, something like that. We're, we're gonna see. So, I mean, you kind of get the picture. If you have to keep following up, sometimes it can get annoying, but many times they just need more time and then they'll get back to you. But what I have found is that the more you need to follow up with a client, the worse of a client they'll be. Uh, let me explain that a bit. So let's say you're in this situation and you've sent your credentials and then you don't hear from them. Two days later, you say, oh, just wanted to check what was going. They're like, oh yeah, we'll make a decision by tomorrow and you're fine. And then make a decision by tomorrow and then it's okay. But say they don't and you still don't hear from them. You're like, okay. So then two days later, whenever it is, you shoot them another email and they say, oh yeah, we'll make, you know, our, we're almost about to make our decision. You know, it'll be next week and then next week and then something like that. Then finally, three weeks later, they make their decision fine. You think, okay, well, whatever. I waited it out and it'll be fine. These clients, however, usually the reason why they keep postponing that is, let's face it, they don't have their act together. There's some place that maybe the person you talk to is great and very organized, but their boss or their boss's boss, or maybe their client and client, or anyway, somewhere along that chain of command or, you know, of supply is is causing the delay you know someone doesn't have their act together and that's going to reflect later in the work you do someone else can come up with the uh the precise formula but um i can guarantee you there's there's some ratio there like there's a negative correlation between how often you have to follow up with them and for how many days and then and how good of a client they are going to be later on i don't know how to quantify how good a client can be but still there is going to be some negative correlation there and uh, so just be wary of it. And at a certain point now, everyone, obviously, if you're first starting out, then any job is better than nothing. But at a certain point, you'll start to get into your comfort zone, let's say. And you'll realize, like for me, if I have to follow up for more than a week with a prospective client, then I kind of let it go. And because I can't spend all my time following up, first of all. Second of all, I just know even once things start, they're not going to have their act together. And you know, I'm not going to push that because then once they start, they'll be like, okay, here's the information. And two days later, and this has happened, you know, two days later, they'll be like, oh, no, no, we gave you the wrong information. I hope you didn't start yet. You're like, really? You know, I'm like halfway through. Obviously, you can't prove it though at that point. So what are you going to do? Or else uh, they'll, you know, they'll send you stuff and then later get mad because you translated this half and not that. And you're like, you told me to translate that half and not this half or something like that. Something's going to go weird or awry or kind of messed up. And if you're lucky, they won't blame you, but it'll still mean more work for you. But chances are they'll try to blame you at least because, you know, you're down that chain of command, right? If their boss's boss got mad at their boss's boss or their boss and then their boss got mad at them and then they'll get mad at you. And anyway, it can all just be a headache. And I think one of the first red flags is uh, to, well, is the fact that you have to follow up so many times. And that can always be an issue. I think I've already mentioned a couple red flags. One, by the way, is a rush job, I found. This not all the time, but very often, a rush job can mean a red flag. It means someone doesn't have their, their act together, right? Because, let's face it, that, that PowerPoint uh, spreadsheet, whatever thing that needed to be translated, didn't just pop up yesterday, and they probably could have had some foresight and figured out that it needed to be translated ahead of time, but someone there didn't have their act together and didn't figure it out. 
there are exceptions, okay? There are emergencies that happen and things, you know, so translations need to be done. But by and large, usually whenever there's a rush job, somewhere down the line doesn't have their act together, trust me. And the same goes for when you have to follow up with someone very often. You know, if, if you have to keep following up and if they're not getting back in touch with you, stuff like that, that should automatically set off some red flags. Obviously, it's your judgment call. You can decide if you want to stick with them and see how it goes or not. But at least just so you know, chances are somewhere, someone that you're dealing with or who's dealing with that person or someone, someone doesn't have their act together. So just know that, you know, just keep that in mind when you're dealing with it. So not, I just wanted to share this and share this little tidbit that at least I've found from my experience. And uh, so hopefully you can find it useful in yours and it helps you out. Uh, please let me know if, if you disagree though, you know, maybe, maybe you haven't found that to be the case at all. Feel free to let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear about it and uh, to discuss it a bit. Otherwise, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I uh, will see you in the next video. Don't forget to click like if you do wherever the like button is. I don't know if they do mirror image here. And, uh, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.